There were three seconds left on the clock. The score was 74 to 73, and I could feel the entire gym's bated breath, waiting for me to pull a miracle. The ball got inbounded to me. I dribbled past one defender, took a step back, and shot. The ball went through the net as the buzzer sounded, making the score 75 to 74. We had won! The entire gym erupted in loud cheers and my teammates rushed to me and picked me up. This was a good feeling. I had won our basketball team yet another match, and hence the tournament, against a rival school. I looked at my dad sitting on the bench and he was packing up our gear. As the basketball coach of our team, he was in charge of making sure everything got back in one piece. But it wouldn't have hurt him to just give me a little smile or a word of appreciation. Maybe just a thumbs up? This was 8th grade, and my natural athleticism and strict coaching by my dad had molded me into being the captain of our school basketball team. I had learned to love the sport, but the whole locker room roughness and the Gatorade dumping and the hooligan behavior by my teammates was not really to my liking. But I always felt like I had to do this for my dad. He played college ball. He was really good, and everyone had high hopes for him until he got injured. Surgeries and bad choices affected his game enough to get him thrown off the team. He could have gone pro, but the mistakes he made had caught up to him, and now he wanted me to live the life that he couldn't. He wanted me to play in the NBA one day. Nice shot, doofus. You really had to wait until the last moment to show off, didn't you? I turned around to see Denise, my elder sister, standing behind me with her malicious smile. She was one of those popular, pretty seniors who took the mean girl's persona too seriously and never missed a chance to make me look bad in front of my friends. I was a bit hurt, but I didn't show it. This had been going on forever. Yeah, whatever, I don't see you doing anything worthwhile, leave me alone, I said, and walked away with my team before she could respond. I didn't need this, especially not today. I got back home and told my mom about my win. She had always been supportive, and I could tell her anything. I took a shower, grabbed a plate of food, and sat in front of the TV, flipping through the channels. 30 minutes to complete transformation. These words flashed across the screen, and I was intrigued enough to pause on it. It was a fashion channel, and they were showing a makeup tutorial. It started off with a girl who looked like she had just gotten out of bed, and she opened her kit and started putting something called a primer on her face. Five minutes in, she looked like a runway model. What was this sorcery? I wanted to see the finished look. It was unreal what she could do with just a small color palette. At that moment, my dad walked into the room. Look at what this little girl is watching, he announced to the house and laughed. I got embarrassed and quickly switched the channel, knowing I'd never hear the end of it if Denise found out about it. My face turned red, and I could feel a warm feeling creeping up my neck. That's how it had always been in the house. My dad wanted me to be a man's man. He would make fun of me for things like organizing my wardrobe or setting my hair right. That's not how men live, he used to say. I finished my meal and went back to my room, still thinking about the girl on TV. Was it her I was infatuated with? Or the literal magic she did on her face? And what the hell was primer? That evening, while my sister was out with her friends, I snuck up into her room. I knew she had makeup in her drawer. She had always been one of those fancy, haughty girls in school who would never be seen dead without a layer of it on their face. I wanted to see what it was. I double-checked to see if anyone was around, and when everything was safe, I went in and started going through her drawers. Jackpot! The second drawer on her dresser was where she kept her makeup. I started going through the items in it, lipstick I was familiar with, but a lot of the stuff said things like foundation and bronzer and highlighter. Isn't that stuff you use in your notes? And finally, I found it. Maybelline Primer. I read the instructions on it and took a little bit of it on my finger and put it on my face. I spread it evenly, and I could see it smoothening the lines on my already young face. This was beautiful. At this moment, the door opened behind me and Denise walked into the room. What are you doing in here, you pervert? She screamed at me. Is this what you do when I'm not around? Come and go through my stuff? You're vile. This is when she noticed the tube of primer in my hand, one half of my face looking smoother than the other. Her angry face quickly faded to a look of malice and derision. And she said, wow, this is precious. This is going to be fun. She left the room, closing the door behind her. I was horrified. If she spoke to my dad about it, I would never hear the end of it. I threw the two back into the drawer, wiped off my face with my sleeve, and ran after her. I found her in the hall sitting next to dad and smiling ear to ear. My dad was sitting on the couch having a glass of gin and looking at me with the look of utmost disgust on his face. Is this true? 
Were you putting on your sister's makeup? He asked me, and I could sense the regressed anger in his voice. I looked down at the carpet and didn't say anything. He threw his glass on the floor and shouted at me, Look at me! Is this true? My mom hurried into the room, horrified at the sound of the shattering glass. She took a look at what was happening and held my hand and led me to my room. I was cowering with fear, almost about to cry. She asked me what was going on. Fighting back tears, I told her that I saw something on the TV about makeup and I just wanted to try it out because it seemed interesting. My mom had always been the supportive one. She wiped my tears and told me to calm down. It's okay. I understand. You're allowed to experiment with whatever you want. I just want you to be open with me about everything. I'll manage things with your father. For now, just stay away from all this and focus on your games. That's what he wants. I somehow stopped sobbing and agreed with her. My heart was in the right place, but I could not open up to her about my interest in makeup. I wasn't sure if I wanted her to know just yet. Over the next few weeks, I watched my sister do her makeup. I learned that she used a lot of brushes for different things, and the order of what she put things in mattered as much as the product she was using. I watched the fashion channel now and then when nobody was around and picked up a few tips from there as well. But I still needed my own things to practice with. I couldn't get anywhere with this interest if I had no hands-on experience. I think that my interest in it grew more and more because of how it was prohibited. I had started being resentful of all the things I was being made to do, and I felt like everything in my life was just dictated by my dad and my sister. They decided what clothes I wore which sports I played, which subjects I needed to study, everything. This was my act of rebellion. And in the process of indulging in something that was truly my own, I was drawn to makeup, enough to risk going out and getting some of it for myself. I had money saved up from my basketball wins and my summer dog walking and paper routes. I had no idea how much makeup cost, but I knew I had enough to afford at least a beginner's kit. I was confident I'd get it right. What I hadn't thought of that I'd completely freeze as soon as I walked into the salon. There was just so much of it. Everywhere I looked, I could see small boxes, brushes of all sizes, fake eyebrows in different colors. I didn't know where to start. I didn't know if I could do this. I stood at the door for a few seconds, turned around and left. I didn't want to do this. I was so close. Everything I had read in the used magazines that my sister had thrown out had given me information, and it was all useless. I needed to get my hands on it. I decided to try again the next weekend. I went back to the salon, walked back in, and this time, I actually managed to walk up to the counter. I had to do this. The woman behind the counter smiled at me as I entered. Her name tag said Kayla, and she looked at me with inquisitive yet kind eyes. Can I help you with anything, sir? I immediately got awkward and said, um, no, I don't know. I was just looking around for some stuff for my sister. Okay, what kind of things are you looking for? I, I don't know, makeup stuff? She understood that I was nervous, looked around and dropped the cold professional demeanor. It's okay, kid. I'll hook you up with a beginner's kit, yeah? You'll get the basic brushes and the basic foundation. It'll be a good place to start. Don't worry about it. I immediately felt like home with her. She was kind and understanding, and she spoke to me like she understood what I was going through. She took out a few brushes from under the counter, put together a few packets and said, There you go. That'll be $32.50. You can have it for $30. First time discount. She winked at me as she handed me the stuff and I knew in that moment that I was coming back here. I practiced with it on late nights with the door of my room locked when I was sure that everyone was asleep. I actually got pretty good at it. I even found the confidence to talk to my mom about it and she surprisingly understood. If this is what you like, do it. I support you no matter what she said. Fast forward a few years and I was almost a pro at doing makeup. As much of a pro as I could become with my limited time and access to new information anyway, I knew exactly how to apply a primer, how to pick the right color of foundation, how to make broader brush strokes when putting on highlighter, how to pick the right flesh tone concealer, everything. Basketball was still in full swing and my game was suffering from all the late night makeup practice I was doing, but I didn't care. Makeup was my thing. Basketball was just something that was thrust upon me and I knew where my priorities were. I had become great friends with Kayla by now because of my frequent visits to the makeup salon, and she had helped me a lot regarding everything. It was the final basketball game of my senior year, and it was an important day for my dad. He told me that there was going to be a scout at the game, and that it was extremely important that I bring my A game. He was hoping I'd get a basketball scholarship to get to a good college to study business, and then eventually go pro. He told me that this was the most important day of my life, and everything I did on the court today would decide what my life was going to look like. 
But did I want this to be my life? 20 hours per week of coaching, constant pressure of studying, and being surrounded by dude bros? I wanted to be a makeup artist. I wanted my own salon, maybe my own brand someday. This wasn't the most important day of my life. This was the most important day of my dad's life. I was not going to live my life according to his rules anymore. And this was step one in that direction. So I tanked the game. I was terrible. I missed easy layups. I butterfingered easy passes. I turned the ball over and I ran out shot clocks. No scout in their right minds would have thought of me for a scholarship. We lost terribly. And I was feeling both elated for my personal victory and scared because of what my dad was going to do. The yelling started as soon as I got home. I've never seen my dad so angry. He threw things, screamed till his face turned red, and almost hit me. I tried to keep my feelings in check and not cry. I was not going to let him have this one. You couldn't even make one play right. We've been practicing for this for years. You have screwed up everything. What are you going to do with your life now? This was my moment. It was now or never. My voice was quivering with suppressed tears. I said, Dad, I don't want to play basketball. I want to be a makeup artist. He was dumbfounded for a second. He took a few heavy breaths and said, Is this some kind of a joke? What are you, some sort of fairy? What kind of man wants to be a makeup artist? You're going to study and go to business school. As long as you're living under my roof, there will be no more talk about this. Yeah, maybe I don't want to live under your roof anymore. And I think it was that moment that changed the entire course of my life. I could have listened to him and just went along with it, as I had for all my life. But I'd had enough. I was done. I knew I had enough savings to make it on my own for a while. Or I could get a job and get started on my journey. This was something I had to do for myself. And I wasn't going to let my dad get in the way. Smoke was practically coming out of my dad's ears by then. Get out of my house. I don't want to see your face ever again, he said, and stomped away to his room. I could hear mom pleading with him to calm down and understand what I was going through. But I knew my dad well enough to know that he wouldn't budge. It was time for me to leave home. I went up to my room, packed up some of my clothes in a bag, and went to say goodbye to mom. She couldn't stop crying, and I reassured her. I told her I would stay in touch with her no matter what happens. I asked her not to worry about me and that I would be okay. As I was leaving, she slipped some cash in my bag without me noticing. The first thing I did was go back to the salon to see Kayla. She was the only person I knew who had any idea about what I was going through. Hey Kayla, I need a favor. Yeah kid, how's it going? You seem down, is everything alright? No, but it will be. Kayla, I need a job. Can you give me something to work on here, please? I promise I'll put everything into it. Kayla paused, unsure of what to say. She asked someone to cover the counter, took me in a corner and asked me what was happening. She asked me if I was sure about all of this and if there was something I could do to salvage the situation back home. I told her everything about my dad and how things were and that there was nothing left for me back there. Sadly, there wasn't a job opening at the salon. She told me that the best she could do was offer me an unpaid internship as I had no proven experience in the field. I had to prove myself in order to get paid. I said that was okay. It wasn't ideal, but it was better than nothing. Within two months, I had a job. It paid a decent amount of money, and it's a good thing that I got it when I did because I was almost out of my savings. I learned more in those two months of unpaid internship than I had in four years of sneaking around and watching fashion TV channels and reading tutorials in magazines. Kayla was always supportive and helped me with all the things I was doing wrong or was unfamiliar with. I kept in touch with my mom, giving her regular updates on how my life was going. The single-minded focus my dad helped me develop made my progress faster. And as I began to grow, more and more anger towards him vanished, although not completely. This was seven years ago. Life has changed a lot since. After working with Kayla for almost six years, I decided it was time to start my own small business. I'm planning on renting out a small place near the town center and stocking up on a few products and salon instruments. I made an Instagram page for myself for marketing my skills. Six months in, I was doing decent and I was turning a decent profit with my work. I even have the resources to hire another makeup artist to help me. Today, I turned 26. I've been working in this industry for eight years. I've decided to open my own little salon. My Instagram makeup page has more than 100,000 followers, and I regularly get contracts to do the makeup for weddings and photo shoots. I've reached influencer status in this town, and I've even had a few paid promotions for makeup brands. Life has been good. I know that it wouldn't have been the same if I'd gone to business school, but I don't spend time wondering what it could have been. I made this happen for myself, and I'm happy that I did. And now, I'm expanding my business, and for the grand opening, 
My dad called and asked if he could come visit. With tears in my eyes, I said yes.